Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. And today's video is going to be a little bit different to something I would normally do, whilst being firmly within the remit of what it is that I do. Yeah, we're going to be going back to taking a look at C3 J Space Rat in Class 3 Wormhole Combat Sites. Now, these are a very popular way of making ISK. You can make upwards of 40 million ISK per site. And if you can run three of those sites in an hour, well, that's 120 million ISK per hour, right? Pretty good ISK can be made in those sites. But I've showcased a lot of ships that are things like Tech 2 heavy assault cruisers, um, some battle cruisers, some Tech 2 battle cruisers, battleships, that kind of thing. What if you are fairly new to the game and you want to get into something that can run C3s without a mad amount of skill point investment? What if you are an alpha? pilot, one if you don't have many skill points or you're looking to get into C3 ratting as quickly as possible before eventually coming back and trading into something like those heavy assault cruisers later on. Well, this was an interesting conversation that we were having in Catskull, and you know what? I have got some really cool ideas for this. Today, I'm going to be showcasing two fits that can be used from the Kaldari ship tree to start off J-Space ratting. You are going to need to do this with a friend or as a multi-box scenario. You need two of these ships to make it work, but it is easy as can be. The skill point requirements for these ships are incredibly low, and I think that this is a great entry point into starting starting off with C3J Space Ratting. Anyway, if you enjoy this video or find it helpful, let me know, hit like, drop a comment down below. Both of those things massively help me out because they basically say to YouTube, people are engaging with this content. Let's show it to some more people, right? And that's how a community grows. So please, 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 please hit that like button, drop a comment. Even if it's just one saying, hey, for the algorithm, really appreciate it. If you do want to go the extra mile to support me financially, you can do so via Patreon, PayPal, or uh, Redbubble Merchandise Store, all linked in the description down below. And talking about the description down below, there are two links down there that you may enjoy as well. One is a referral link. Click that, you earn 1 million free skill points. It uh, doesn't matter how old your account is, just as long as you've not used a referral link before, I get a little kickback from that as well. And there is the link to the Catskull Community Discord down there as well. Great place to come and talk to a load of like-minded EVE Online players, ask some questions, get some help, and if you did want to join Catskull in the game, that's where you apply. So all of that said and done then, let's talk about the two fits that we're going to be using in order to go C3J Space Ratting with as few skill points as possible. Now before we get to the ins and outs of this, let's just cover some basic concepts, right? There are two fits that we're going to be looking at, one for the Ferox Navy issue, one for the Drake Navy issue. I will link both fits in the description down below, um, so you can copy and paste them into game, into the fitting window, or into Pypha, or whatever else you want to, to see how they work with your tools. Now, ultimately, this is designed around the concept of having Kaldari Battlecruiser up to four, and then a load of the basic gunnery or missile skills around you trained up as well. Basically, when you copy-paste this into game, just train the basic skills required to fly this, and it will work. I've done a lot of solo testing on this, and I've done some testing dual as well. You will need two people in these ships. You can do two Feroxes, two Drake Navy issues, or one of of each. It really doesn't matter. Um, you can mix and match between them. So that is the basic concept. Let's have a look at the two ships. They're not the cheapest ships to start off with. They're about 160 to 200 million each, but they will make that back fairly quickly. You can start running JSpace content with them. And once you've got the basic skills here, well, you can pick something like a heavy assault cruiser and then start training the skills for that. Because basically, obviously, to fly a Ferox Navy issue, you're going to need to have Kaldari Cruiser to three and then Kaldari Battle Cruiser to four. Now that you've got Kaldari Battle Cruiser to four, you go back and get Kaldari Cruiser up to five, then start training the heavy assault cruiser skills, and now you can fly the Eagle. Or if you're doing the Drake, you're doing that with missiles, you can go back and fly the Cerberus, which is arguably, in my opinion, the better of the two hacks there to fly. This, there will be other ones of these as well, and if there's enough interest in this, I probably will look at doing this with different factions as well, like Amar, Minmatar, and Galente. 
But for now, let's have a look then at these two vessels. First of all, the Ferox Navy issue. Our high slots are 200mm prototype Gorse cannons. Again, we're not going with the Tech 2s. You can Tech 2 any of the stuff in here as well if you have the skills to do it. it. This is just designed to be as low skill point investment as possible while working. We're also using Kaldari Navy Antimatter, basically the only one you really need. You can play around with different bits here, but depending on your abilities as a pilot, you should find that Kaldari Navy Antimatter is really all you need. And you get decent DPS out of this, 470 DPS. Tracking's not great, so you want to keep your range on things, but again, we will be able to cope quite comfortably here. In the final high slot, a Shield Command Burst 1 with a Shield Harmonizing Charge. Now, both of these fits are completely passive. Um, you should therefore be using either the Shield Harmonizing Charge or the one that increases your Shield EHP. And because you're going to have two of these ships, you want one with the Harmonizing and one with the bigger EHP. Pointless using the, the Repair Speed one. It's just the Active Repair Charge. Pointless because there is no Active Repair going on. So with your two different ships, you'll have two different Command Bursts. Massive increasing your capabilities. Our mid slots, full shield tank down here as well, large FS9 regolith compact shield extenders all the way down here into a multi-spectrum shield hardener. I've gone for enduring because we can fit it. We then have a Pythium C-type EM shield amplifier. These are fairly cheap so we can go with this quite comfortably just to pull up our electromagnetic resistance. Again, you can drop this to a cheaper one if it's all you have available, but Pythium isn't bad on the market at all. Bit of propulsion in the form of a 10 mega newton monopropellant enduring afterburner just to help keep the capacitor a bit more stable. Our low slots we then have an IFA compact damage control, a vortex compact magnetic field stabilizer times two and a shield power relay two. This one you could probably drop down to a non two. The reason I kept this in here is that the requirements are only energy grid upgrades four so you can work with that but if you did really want to you can just drop that down to a type D restrained if you don't have that energy grid upgrades for. And that's actually a good point here. If you're looking at anything in any of my fits and are going, mm, I can't afford that or I don't have the skills for that, then all you need to do is mouse over the module, go into show info and then into variations. From variations here, you can see different types. Look at the tech one, but not the basic ones. Have a look at like the type D restrained or the compact and um, things like that. You can even look at faction as well because these will have lower fitting requirements than a shield power relay. Nice easy tip for you. For the rigs then, medium core defense field purges all the way down to a medium thermal shield reinforcer. Again, that's just to pull up the shields here. We've got the field purges there just to give us a bit more passive HP per second. We do also get some damage from the drones here. Um, obviously, I've lost drones since doing this, so the DPS should be a little bit higher. Tech 1 drones are all you really need. You can go for something like, say, Kaldari Navy, uh, Kaldari Navy Hornets, or uh, like Federation Navy uh, Hobgoblins, whatever you fancy there. Just drones are drones, right? They're going to help you against the target, but don't stress them too much. The DPS is not huge on those, but they are going to help you against the frigates, so I do recommend having them and just being better at drone control than I am. Now, the second part of this then is the Drake Navy issue. I need to load in some hardware on this one. So we're going to go Kaldari Navy. And we'll just use Infernos for the time being. And in the Shield Command Burst, it is the Shield Extension Charge we want this time. Shield Extension Charge, this is going to give us the uh, heavier amounts of EHP. So when you're actually flying that Ferox, it'll have more EHP than you saw because someone else will be using the Extension Charge, right? That's the theory. One of you is running the extension charge, one of you is running the harmonizing charge. So you get bigger resistances and bigger shields. We're then using Arbalest heavy missile launches with Kaldari Navy heavy missiles. Doesn't matter whether they're Inferno or Mjolnir or whatever, go for the cheapest ones because, yeah, the sleepers that you're going to be shooting have Omni resists. They have the same damage resistance to every single type of damage. 79 kilometer flight range. Oh boy, that's huge. Really long range from these. Our mid slots, again, we've got large FS9 regolith compact shield extenders all the way down to an enduring multi-spectrum shield hardener, topped off with a 10 mega newton monopropellant enduring afterburner. Our low slots, slightly different this time. We've got a damage control 2, which should actually be an IFA. Um, there again, just to showcase, it's because under the requirements here, hull upgrades 4, whereas the IFA 
if we have a look at that, the requirements are significantly lower. So if you can run the two, go for it, but if not, just go for an IFFA. Power Diagnostic System 2, again, if you need to drop this down because you don't have Energy Grid upgrades for, we can just drop that down to something like a Mark 1 Compact. Um, again, requirements there, significantly lower followed by two shield power relay twos as before we can drop them down if needed 102 hp per second not bad at all there and for our rigs medium thermal shield reinforcer medium core defense field extender one and medium em shield reinforcer two and again doesn't even have to be a two if you want to keep your costs down drop that to a one it's just to pull up those resistances that little bit and remember if you are going to be having so obviously we're going to see an ehp drop here because I'm going to t take this out, but assume the other ship is then running the extension charge and you're running the harmonizing charge. Look at those resistances. Beautiful. If you can get both of those running on you, you get some really nice EHP and solid resistances to boot. Drones this time around, you do get medium drones. So rather than Hornets or Hobgoblins, you're going to be running Vespers or uh, Hammerheads. Again, if you have the skills to use twos, go for it. If not, use just the basic ones or even like Caldari or Federation Navy, whichever works for you. Anyway, let's showcase this in action because this is really easy to fly. You just have you and your friend, both of you in either of these fits. You can have two Drakes, two Ferox or a Drake and a Ferox and it works absolutely fine. Big shout out and thank you to Rafael for helping me run this site for the combat demonstration here. He is in the Drake Navy issue that we've just showcased. I am in the Ferox Navy issue. You'll see I make a few mistakes while piloting this. Again, you don't need to call me out in the comment section. I know I make mistakes. Um, it's basically, yeah, if I showcase that I can do this whilst making mistakes, then if you're a better pilot than I am, this works even better, right? So Fortification Frontier Stronghold is what we're running. This is theoretically the best site for these because it has the lowest amount of EHP to get through and earns a good 42 to 44 million. I can't remember exactly where that number lies. Um, but yeah, it's a good amount of ISK for the site um, and they are very, very straightforward to run. We don't have to worry about any big dangerous problems. I have run all four of the C3 combat sites with the setups and they do all work. You can run all of them, including the Outpost Frontier. Just a case of, yeah, it's probably better to stick to the Fortification Frontiers when you're learning then use the others if there's no one else running them and you just want to clear them because hey if you've not got a fortification frontier stronghold then at least you can run the others right so wave one of the ffs it is the frigates we want to take out first you'll see my tracking on these is absolutely atrocious i've already lost my drones i forgot to replace them i should have drones myself going out raf is launching drones at those frigates himself um, i'm trying to shoot the frigates with the rail guns it's just not working bad idea so you should really have those drones in order to help rip those apart. For me, yep, I should be changing my target across to the cruiser um, and letting the drones do their thing against the uh, defender, the emergent defender. Again, fly it better than I do and you'll get better results, right? But you can see there, I'm just really not hitting that frigate at all. The drones are doing far more than I could be. By actually piloting a little bit and slingshotting and trying to get some you know, range on it, things would be better, but yeah, there we go. Oh well, kind of wish I'd opened up the fitting screen as well so you could see the resistances and EHP that's going on at the moment, um, but there we go. You can see the drones are now doing better against the Emergent Defender. Um, I'm shooting the Awakened Defender with the railguns, that's going down just a little bit faster. It's also nice to get to fly a Ferox for once. This is a ship I really don't fly often. I quite like the look of it. I'm just not a huge railgun fan, and the Ferox doesn't really do it for me solo. Can do T2, uh, C2s absolutely fine, but C3s solo, no. You do need a duo to make that work, but there we go. I suppose I should also use this opportunity to answer the obvious question of, okay, you're doing this in Navy issues, could you do it in standards? Could you do it in just a Drake and a Ferox rather than a Drake Navy and a Ferox Navy? The answer is I actually don't know. I don't think you should either way. I think if you're going to do a Drake and a Ferox, you may as well go up to the Navy versions here because of the massive improvements you're going to get to your clear times. But uh, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. Um, it's kind of up to you. If you really don't have the money to go for a Navy issue, you could probably get the standard issues to work. I just really feel that you should. 
you should go to the navies for this. Like, th there's just so much advantage for going to the navies. You're gonna have considerably better clear time, so even the increased cost, you are going to make that ISK back significantly faster. Um, if you remember, if you've watched me covering the Drake in C2s, you'll know that it is quite a slow ship to do it in general. So having the Drake Navy with additional DPS and some of the other stats going on with it, I see that as a good thing. I see that as a good thing. Anyway, we're well into wave two now. Again, you take out one of those upholders early on because it's going to web you and it's going to nuke you. Not that webification or neutralization is too much of a threat in these sites for these ships because bottom line, we don't actually have any real need for capacitor. Capacitor is mainly for just keeping the afterburner and the multi-spectrum running, but it, you know, kind of is what it is. Um, we, we, you just, just do your thing. Just do your thing. You're, you've got enough capacitor stability that these guys will mute you. Like, you can get muted out in these ships, but you should kill them long before that becomes a worry. Anyway, we're going to have me trying to get some nice screenshots here, I think, to use for thumbnails. There we are. Yeah, look at that. Again, I've got a guy on voice comms who's descanning as well, so I can afford to do that for a moment. That's what those little stutters are on screen there. That's me hitting the screenshot button on the game there. So I don't know if I'm going to use either of those, but there we go. Anyway, I'm going to skip ahead now to wave three. We're going to kill the defender first, followed by the upholder. Then wave three will spawn in. There we go. That's the end of wave two. Upholder goes down. We now have a battleship um, and a load of other stuff spawning. That battleship does do a lot of damage, so you want to get your traversal up nice and quickly. The reason I lock the battleship first is so that I can see where it actually is on grid um, and get traversal up against it very, very quickly. I do strongly recommend taking out the Awakened Upholder first of all. Yes, I know that there's a Preserver, which is a remote rep ship, but you'll see that we can kill the Upholder pretty fast, even though it's going to be getting repped by the Preserver. This is because that web and that newt can be very, very dangerous with that battleship on grid. So we get rid of the Upholder as quickly as possible. Then we go on to the Preserver whilst slowly bringing ourselves in towards orbiting the battleship. Because again, once you've got an orbit up against the battleship, you can start to avoid a lot more of the incoming damage. Now, I've taken very little damage this entire run. I know from voice comms that Raffle has gone down to about 65% shields, um, and kind of that's as low as it went. Even in the Outpost Frontier Stronghold, it didn't really drop below 50% for either one of us. It is a great little duo going on here. Now, there's a fun little moment here where both Raf and I are trying to figure out what we should shoot at. I kind of want to go for the cruisers first of all because we can kill them that little bit faster and thus reduce the incoming DPS. Raf wants to go for the battleship and I'm like, no, no, okay, fine, yeah, let's go for the battleship. And then as I start to go for the battleship, he starts to go for the cruiser. And so there's this wonderful little back and forth. Communicate better than we did. That's the lesson I'm trying to give you here. Communicate better than we did. And look at that pulsar in the background. Yes, again, I know we're in a pulsar. Um, I do assure you that yes, of course, there are bonuses to shield ships for being in a pulsar. You are going to be fine in other types as well. Probably stay clear of a Wolf Raya, um, because yeah, shield reduction, not a good thing in your resistances. You probably will have too low shield resistances to make that work. But even a cataclysmic variable, because you're not actually doing any reps on your own ship, the fact that you've got lower shield booster reps or whatever, doesn't actually matter, so these two will run cataclysmic variable C3s. Which is really nice, because that tends to be the wormhole that a lot of people roll away. There we are, I did actually have a look there, I don't know if you saw the stats there, but you can probably pause that and have a look at the numbers to see what our actual EHP is, with me running the harmonizing charge and him running the extension charge, so you can get an idea of what the Ferox Navy issue actually looks like EHP wise from there. Anyway, folks, otherwise, I think I've pretty much categorically proved that we can run this site no trouble at all. Great little duo setup here. If you have folks in your corporation who are newer to C3 uh, J Space ratting, or if you yourself are just starting off, you and a friend, or you multi boxing if that's your thing, in one of these two ships each. That's all it takes. Really easy to run, decent clear times. Yeah, you're splitting the loot in half, but. It's an entry point, right? It's somewhere to get you started. If all you have access to is a C3 and you don't have access to some of the higher SP required uh, C3 runners, this is how you do it. 
Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way through to the end. Please let me know which faction you would like to see next, if you've got any ideas of how you could make this better, so on and so forth. Would love to hear it in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!